Um, so my name is Vishwa Shedia. I am Senior Product Manager here at uh, Aruba. I've been primarily responsible for uh, the USCX uh, on, uh, in 10.4. Uh, let me go into uh, cloud native operating system and how we define cloud native. For us, cloud native is not uh, where the software runs, but how it is built. And uh, let me talk uh, to this in terms of how it relates to AOSCX. Gartner recently published research identifying the four key characteristics of uh, a cloud native infrastructure. And AOSCX actually has all those pieces in its design. If you start with modularity, within AOSCX, you have highly independent processes and applications actually continuously syncing with an in-memory state database and uh, resulting in a highly modular operating system. You go with resiliency. Within AOSCX, uh, HA or high availability is an artifact of the design and uh, this results in a highly resilient system. Look at all other network operating uh, vendors and operating systems out there. They are highly reliant on inter-process uh, communication, which is not the case here. Third piece uh, is the programmability piece. Uh, we have a fully programmable 100% RESTful API operating system uh, and we have modeling for every function within the switch. What this means is what we as a networking wonder, whatever we can program our uh, operating system with, our customers can do as well. So what we have taken is we have taken these interfaces and then built tools like NetEdit and NAE, which Scott and Craig will talk about, and uh, really provided additional value uh, to our customers. And finally, elasticity and scalability. The elasticity of AOSCX can be uh, understood from the fact that we have a single cloud native operating system which runs right from your edge access to your aggregation to your core to your data center. So one OS uh, runs everywhere. So this strong software uh, foundation helps us to be innovative and also gives us tremendous feature velocity which will be depicted in the next slide. So AOSCX 10.4 is our fifth major AOSCX uh, release. And uh, we launched our first AOSCX release in October of 2017, so it's been uh, roughly two years. And this is the first one which has majorly campus access features. So let me uh, delve into uh, the number of features. So we have 140 plus new access features in this specific release. Uh, it goes into all feature areas, right from access security to layer two, layer three, multicast, QoS. We talked about 60 watt uh, 802.3 BT. Uh, we have uh, 802.3 BZ, which is smart rate or M gig. Uh, so we have all the features you need, uh, both for app, for every pin, to be honest. Let me go into some of the key features for VSX Live upgrades. I have a specific slide, so I'll uh, answer Ethan's question specifically. Uh, for, uh, for, from a segmentation standpoint, uh, our flagship segmentation solution is dynamic segmentation. Uh, basically, the way it works is you have policy uh, consistently applied across wired and wireless access uh, users, and uh, the policy is dynamically downloaded through downloadable user roles from Aruba ClearPass, irrespective of where the user accesses the network from. And then, depending upon the policy, the traffic can either be tunneled to an Aruba mobility controller or it can be switched uh, locally. We have had dynamic segmentation on our previous gen switches since 2017. It has been highly successful, and we have brought that to AOSCX as well. Is there additional ASIC magic that's making that uh, happen? Yes. Additional because, maybe metadata yes, because, or something being stored? Because the previous solutions were on our own custom ASIC. These are also on our own custom uh, yeah. ASIC, which is the Gen 7 ASIC. Yeah. So this is our solution, right? We have customers who want standard space, VXLAN, MP, BGP, EVP, EN based segmentation solution. They want a scalable, standard based uh, solution across campus and data center. We have actually invested in this as well, and we have VXLAN, MP, BGP, EVP, and on our 6,000 series as well as all our 8,000 series. So, end to end. So, 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 that's all of them? Yes, all yeah. of them. And then uh, coming to POE or power over uh, Ethernet, there's always these use cases where you want your endpoints to retain uh, power when a switch reboots or when you uh, do a planned upgrade. We have always on uh, POE on our 6300 and 6400 switches uh, so that uh, endpoints like IoT endpoints, your healthcare devices, your sensors can retain power 
uh, during a, a reboot or planned upgrade. So let me go into VSX. Uh, I have this one slide uh, specifically covering uh, this. VSX stands for Virtual Switching uh, Extension. We have had this on our 8000 uh, series for quite a uh, long time, and we are bringing this down to the Aruba 6400. Uh, so VSX delivers on the promise of uh, ISSU, uh, ISSU in-service software upgrades. And how it does it, it performs an orchestrated update or upgrade of two uh, VSX uh, chassis or systems via one single CLI, which is VSX update software. <coughs> so you know the problems of ISSU, right? You had brake releases. You had, uh, you had to uh, review software compatibility matrices between certain time windows. And then you have that list of caveats. So basically, what the customer had to do is schedule a downtime. So uh, the, uh, we, we have seen this. We have been in this industry. <coughs> enough. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a known pain problem. In, v, in, uh, in a virtual switching extension with VSX live upgrades, we deliver always on availability. How, how we do that is you trigger that single CLI. And with that single CLI, you'll download the desired image on both the switches. So it's two control planes, two data planes, two control planes. Mm. And then uh, very uh, sequentially and intelligently, we will boot the two systems. So it's baked into the design. And we uh, automate that through a single CLI and we uh, do that uh, for you. Usually, that upgrade process uh, takes anywhere from 7 to 10 minutes, depending upon the system. Uh, so We're the, forwarding during those 7 to 10 minutes. There will be forwarding. Yeah. There, will, uh, there will be forwarding during that system, because it, it's a sequential upgrade. So you will have one chassis on, and it will forward traffic during And, and so I can continue to get routing updates? Yes, ab and, absolutely. Because that's absolutely. all living in a database yeah. now. Yeah, that, that brings to a, a good point, Ethan. So, this year, uh, during our Atmosphere uh, conferences, we had three of them. We have the core running VSX. And during the keynote demo sessions, during each of the sessions, we live upgraded our core during the uh, keynote sessions with several thousand attendees, live attendees. So <laughs> was a nervous that, that, day. That's, 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 <laughs> so the thing is, right, unless you prove it uh, to your audience via live sessions, that's how uh, they kind of become. Yeah, I've lived through an, an in-service software updates that was long on promise and short on delivery from another vendor. <coughs> and um, so if I'm a little bit dubious, do, do, do bear with me while I'm just a little cynical. Um, I'm thinking here, how, so you're actually flailing left, right. So you've got two chassis Correct. and an active active. active, 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 active. Correct. And you shift the, do you actually shift the, the, the load yes. by signaling so that all the traffic's taken on one and then yes. the software updates, so all that's automated. All that I don't have automated. to do the traffic shifting and the, no, and the, the load. Everything is automatic, we have shown that. Yeah, uh, live. So mm. okay, and then you fail back the other way. You Perfect. shift all the traffic back, change Correct. the active interfaces so Correct. that it's all left, and then you reboot the right. You're right. Okay. But what about a single chassis, dual soup sort of configuration? So uh, today, uh, in that scenario, we have something called as fast boot or fast upgrade. Uh, we don't have a hit, totally hitless kind of upgrade. We are working. We are looking through those things. That's a pretty hard problem to solve, and uh, we. Uh, at this moment, I can say we are looking into those aspects. Yeah, so but just, this is our solution. Which I don't is think too many people have dual supervisors on dual chassis these days. Not dual chassis, no. But I mean, <laughs> if you had a single chassis solution, you yeah. didn't want to invest in two. You that, might. That, that's going to take longer because you, yeah. you you can't leave the forwarding plane running. Correct. You know, you have to shut down the ASICs at some point to flush the TCAMs. So. And load the firmware into the. Well, this would be a whole longer discussion we don't have time for, but yeah. I want it. I want it. Yeah. I want my hardware. So, I mean, is, 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 is the magic here the fact that it's two chassis and the fact that you're orchestrating the shift to the other chassis? I mean, like, because I think that. Because uh, there is a lot of complexity in shifting state. Uh, then having all your protocols actually signal to downstream switches that you're going to go yeah, down. That, and That is the complexity. That right? is the complexity. Yeah. And also we have, uh, for automation, we have something which we call configuration synchronization. So it, most of the times these two uh, chassis uh, will have similar, uh, more or less similar configs, so you can we sync that config over, so don't, you don't have to configure it yeah. twice. So we so to do our ISSU, you have to control plane redundancy and forward plane redundancy, Correct. but you're also taking care of all the flows, so you're loading it down. And that's the key here, True. is that you're shifting all the flows from left, you know, right to left, yes. upgrading the left, and then switching the flows back from right to the other way, and then upgrading the other side. So the forwarding plane and the control planes are independent. No. Yeah. So it's okay. We actually have a two-minute pruned video of how the process happens here in the interest of time. I've not shown that, but that's how it works, the way I explain. Um, 
what about so in the in the old days we used to have issues with flash reformatting um, with transitions between the database structure in the boxes so and the, you had to power them off or, or, or you couldn't have active active in that situation because they the whole data structures and APIs change how are you handling that uh, so th that's we are doing it internally through our own database so as you know uh, we started with open vSwitch we did a fork of OVSD we built a lot of code around right. it so we have managed that uh, within our database structure so, so there's something like like you're using you talked about the cloud first type correct, approach which correct. means you're running a a Kubernetes type cluster in there with a with a bunch of containers or whatever it is, correct, you know, correct. It could be something like that, right? Correct. Yeah. Yes. So, but at some point you've got to upgrade the other operating system underneath. Yes. That's hitless as well. Okay. Yes. All of that is. It. Okay. So uh, let me be very clear in in our, our demonstration which we did at these places, uh, as well as at our internal conferences and other events, we have shown a hit of 300 milliseconds. So. The hit is 300 milliseconds. 300 milliseconds, which is pretty close to. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, but I wanted to be fully transparent, yeah. and we take care of the uh, transferring the state from one over to other. It's all there in our secret uh, yeah. source. 